Hi everyone, Sam here. Welcome to another episode of Azure Snippets. Today we're going to have a look at developing Terraform templates for Azure using VS Code. And in particular we're going to have a look at the Azure Terraform extension for VS Code, which can make life a lot easier when you're trying to develop templates for Azure. So this extension is a Microsoft produced extension and what it does is it hooks into VS Code and provides you a few commands. If you look at the documentation, it's fairly simple. There are a list of commands here which pretty much mirror the normal commands in Terraform, so init, plan, apply, and so on. The benefit of this extension over just running them normally is what you can have this extension do is actually run these commands against an Azure Cloud Shell instance. So when you run Terraform plan or apply or, or whatever, um, those commands aren't running on your local machine anymore. They're running in the Cloud Shell in Azure. And that has a couple of really key benefits. The first one is you don't actually need to install Terraform on your local machine at all. So you can run this from any location where you have VS Code and this extension installed and access to your files. It also means that it handles synchronizing of your files from your local machine up to Cloud Shell for you. So what you can actually do is when you finish doing your development and the files have been uploaded, they're, they're going to be stored in Cloud Shell. And if you want to come back and run them later from another machine or from your phone using Cloud Shell, they're actually in your Cloud Drive in Cloud Shell stored there for you to use. What using Cloud Shell also means is you don't have to handle authentication to Azure as part of your Terraform commands. This can be really useful during the development phase where you just want to get things running, try them out and see if they work and don't want to handle creating service principles or setting your credentials in environment variables and, and so on. And just to be clear, this, this extension and what we're going to talk about today is really aimed at development. You wouldn't use this for, for production workloads. You're going to want to be running them as part of your CI CD pipeline using service principles and so on. But when you want to sit down and do some development of Terraform and you want to be up and running quickly, then this tool can be really helpful. So let's have a look at how that works. I've got an instance of uh, VS Code running here and it's got a very simple Terraform script here which is just going to go ahead and create a resource group and create a storage account. Nothing terribly uh, exciting there, but it's just a, an example to show what we're going to work with. The first thing you need to do is actually install the Azure Terraform VS Code extension. So if we go have a look at the extension list and we type in Terraform, can see there are a few in here. Um, this first one here, this Terraform one, is nothing to do with Azure, but I would certainly recommend you install that if you are working with Terraform, because this gives you things like syntax highlighting, formatting, and, and so on. This is just a generic Terraform extension. But the one we're interested in, in here is this Azure Terraform extension. And if you click on that, you can see it's got the same information we saw on the web page. But we'll go ahead and install that. Okay, so now that's installed, we can go back to our our Terraform document and let's just go and run a simple plan. So if we run Control shift p we get the, uh, the context menu and we can see we've got Azure Terraform and we can use that and we'll hit plan. Now what that's going to do is ask me if I want to open Cloud Shell. So it's recognized that I want I need to run this in Cloud Shell and do I want to open it so we'll click OK. And this will come up and open Cloud Shell and I'm not signed in so it's going to ask me to actually sign in so we'll click on sign in. Take me to a page and so we'll just log in. And we're all signed in now. And so if you are actually running multiple Azure AD tenants like I am here, it will ask you which tenant you want to log into. So we'll select this one. If you've only got one tenant, you won't get that window. And that's going to go ahead and connect me to Cloud Shell. So if you've not used Cloud Shell in VS Code before, you don't have to use it as part of this, this Terraform plugin. You can run Cloud Shell directly in VS Code anyway. So what this is launching is, is, a, is a Cloud Shell instance, and we could run any commands we wanted to in there. But what this is actually doing is running Terraform commands. So if we let's have a look there, it gave me an error, and we'll have a look at that error in a minute, but let's have a look at what it's doing. Okay, so you can see here that it's throwing an error because because I tried to run plan and actually we haven't actually initialized this project so there's no none of the required plugins have been downloaded or anything like that so we need to run Terraform in it but before we do that let's just have a quick look at what it's actually done so when I ran that command it went in and it created a folder in my cloud drive called Terraform now that folder is only called Terraform because that's the name of the folder this project is in so it's not doing anything special 
um, it will create a folder with the same name as the folder that you're working in. And if we have a look in here, you can see my storage.tf file is in here. And if we cat that, you can see that this is the same file that I've got showing in here. So when I ran Terraform Plan, what it did was it synchronized my files from my desktop machine into the cloud. So I could go ahead now and run Terraform in it directly in Cloud Shell, and that will instantiate everything we need there. That will work. The other option I have is again, I can run the Azure Terraform commands, and there is an init command there. That's doing the same thing, running Terraform in it, but it's also synchronized your files as well beforehand. Now you'll notice while this is happening, I haven't installed anything in Cloud Shell. Cloud Shell already comes configured with Terraform and all the tools you need to work with that. So that's nothing I need to do there. I run in it, that's initialized. So we can now go ahead and run Terraform plan like we were going to before. Again, it's gonna synchronize my files to make sure I'm up to date. And so we can see that's run plan. It wants to create three resources um, and that's exactly what we would expect. And that's again, all run in Cloud Shell. So now I wanna go ahead and run that. So we'll do Terraform apply and exactly the same thing is gonna happen. So as you can see, most of the commands are just running their same Terraform counterpart in Cloud Shell, but also synchronizing my data up there beforehand. At no point there did I need to specify any credentials in my Terraform file. That's using my logged in credentials for Cloud Shell. Um, and at no point did I need to install anything on my machine. So that's run through the initial stage of the apply. It knows what it wants to add and it's asking for my confirmation like you would expect normally. So we'll go ahead and run that. And that's gonna go and do the deploy for me. And there we go, that's created those resources for me. And finally, if we want to, I can go ahead and run destroy from here as well. While that's running, one last thing just to point out, there is also in here a Terraform on Azure. Terraform visualize command in here. This will run the Terraform graph command effectively and generate you a graph file. This does require you to have the GraphViz tools installed on your local machine because they will be run locally so that you get the, the file on your machine. So effectively what it will do, it will run the graph command on the uh, Cloud Shell, get the results, and then use GraphViz locally to create the actual diagram for you. So if you want to use Visualize, you do actually need to make sure you've got GraphViz installed. Just go ahead and finish that destroy. Now you'll notice that I didn't create any state information in my Terraform file, so it's just used local state. So if we have a look in the folder, now we've run it, you'll see that I've got a state file configured locally on this machine. Um, that's fine for, for basic development where it's just me doing that, and arguably it's better keeping that state file in Cloud Shell where it's replicated and so on, than it is on my uh, laptop, but it's still not gonna be a, any use for when you actually wanna start working with a team or moving into production. So you will wanna move at some point to using remote state. Um, when you do that, the Azure Terraform extension works with that no problem, it will abide by whatever state you configure in your Terraform files, and we'll use that. Um, obviously just bear in mind it's running in the context of your user account, so your user account needs access to wherever you're putting that state. That's all there is really, it's a fairly short one today, but I just thought it was worth bringing up because this is a pretty useful extension if you just wanna get up and running and try out some Terraform development really quickly without having to install things on your machine, without having to configure lots of things. You can just spin up Cloud Shell, install the extension, write some Terraform, see if it works. Hopefully that was useful, and I'll see you next time on Azure Snippets.